Welcome to Dad Tech. Today we're reviewing the newest generation of Sonos subwoofer line, aptly named the Sonos Sub Gen 3. Sonos has been providing a standalone subwoofer option for their excellent speaker lineup since 2012. And although that was over eight years ago, the design DNA for the Sonos Sub series has changed very little since then. Personally for me, the design language elicits the image of a love child between the monolith from 2001 Space Odyssey and the glazed Krispy Kreme donut. Although the design aesthetics are relatively unchanged from its predecessor, there are some major internal upgrades that makes this a worthy counterpart to any of the Sonos speakers on the market, as well as a huge upgrade if you pair it with some of the older Sonos speakers. Be warned, however, that this backwards compatibility has some limitations as it will only work with Sonos as two products. So if you're like me and have five of the six items on this incompatible list, you're out of luck. I've had a Sonos Sub for about two months since its release in early June, so I've been able to pair it with my older Play Bass, a pair of Sonos Ones, the Sonos Beam, the newest Sonos 5, and the brand new Sonos Arc. I've never owned any of the previous iterations of the Sonos Sub, and what I can tell you is that legitimately, this is a game changer for anyone who has ever listened to just the standalone Sonos speakers. If you can get over the sticker shock of its price and you won't be relegated to sleeping on the couch after your wife finds out that you bought this thing like I was, this is a must have compliment to your Sonos speaker setup. Priced at $699, the sub weighs in at a portly 36.3 pounds, which as I've mentioned before, in the world of audio components is a good sign. Standing 15.3 inches tall, 6.2 inches deep, and 15.8 inches wide, this product was designed to be put on display in your home. Although there is an option to lay it flat in order for it to be tucked away under your couch, I have a feeling that many won't go that route, and Sonos certainly isn't marketing it to be hidden from plain sight, as evidenced by this, and this, and this. The sub comes in the usual Sonos black or white colorway, and while I enjoy the glossy finish, I was hoping for an option to choose a matte finish in lieu of the glossy, to lessen the impact of the sub's penchant for being a fingerprint magnet. Sonos knew this would be a big enough issue that they actually included a microfiber cloth as part of your purchase. And FYI, this was also the reason why it went with a white colorway instead of fingerprint magnet black. Much like its newest speaker siblings, there are very few embellishments on the exterior of the sub, and even fewer buttons. The Sonos logo and the status light are the only exterior visual notes while the only button to speak of is for the Sonos Mesh Connect functionality. The Ethernet port and power cable connection sits on the bottom of the unit. Be forewarned, however, that this sub, unlike traditional subwoofers, has no other means to connect to any non-Sonos audio component. You will not find your standard LFE connection here as you would on a typical subwoofer. So don't expect to connect this to another receiver. The slot here is where a lion's share of the acoustic work is being done on the sub. On either side of the gap sit two force canceling drivers. This allows the unit to produce powerful bass frequencies without generating noticeable vibration on the unit. All of this is powered by the upgraded CPU, which boasts a 1.5 GHz quad-core processor and 256 MB of SD RAM which is double the amount of RAM from the previous Gen 2. The sub also sports two Class D amplifiers that power the force canceling drivers. Setup and calibration on the sub are all done via the new Sonos app. Sonos's key selling points have always centered around its streamlined setup process and the ease with which devices integrate within its ecosystem. And the Sonos sub is no different. As always, setup is a breeze and you simply add a device within the app the app locates the device and subsequently initiates the setup process by adding the sub to the Sonos Mesh Network. Once the setup is complete, the app then allows you to calibrate the sub in conjunction with whichever speakers you paired it with via the iOS-only TruePlay functionality. During this TruePlay calibration, the system sends a series of tonal pulses out to measure your listening position relative to the speakers. And then you define the characteristics of the room by waving your phone around to create a sound signature for that room. Sonos then utilizes this information to calibrate the speaker settings. Moreover, you can set the sub settings individually and independent of this calibration. This app allows you to turn off the sub, switch its phase from zero to 180 degrees, or alter the crossover frequency, which Sonos claims goes down to as low as 25 Hertz. 
As I mentioned, I paired the sub with my entire Sono Subwoofer eligible roster in order to get a better handle of what it brought to the table for each of these subsequent setups, as well as to try to ascertain the differences for the varying entertainment formats that I was going to play on them. In general, all of the speakers I paired with the Sono Sub made remarkable improvements. I would say, however, that the speakers released with the Sub Gen 3, such as the ARC and the newest Sonos 5, took the most advantage of having the Sono Sub paired with it. Based on my listening test, it seems that the highs and the mids, once the sub was paired, especially for these most recent models, became markedly clearer and more distinct. The bass response was undeniably improved, but we sort of knew that going in. This is a $700 speaker after all. What I was pleasantly surprised about was the ancillary improvement to the higher frequencies. It's almost as if these particular speakers, the ARC and the 5, knew instantly that they could stop devoting processing power to the lower frequencies once the sub was connected. And instead, they used that freed up horsepower to power the mids and the highs. And that prioritization instantly made a huge difference. I don't know this for sure, but it certainly seems as though Sonos developed the encoding software specifically for these types of scenarios. The ARC in particular, especially with movies that lean heavily on these low frequencies, had a drastically different and superior acoustical dynamic. And that was at level zero on the sub, which is the default level. Going up plus two or plus three creates a level of sonic depth that you can feel without all of the quintessential rattle you'd normally get from a traditional subwoofer. If you wanna go absolutely bananas, you can crank this bad boy halfway, which is level eight, which is what I did when I watched Mad Max Fury Road, and holy hell, this thing is just thunderous, but in a good way and without introducing all that typical muddle distortion you would normally get when you crank your setup. The sound profile on music was also vastly improved with the introduction of the song. Bass reliant tracks always felt well rounded, with plenty of oomph without being overpowering at the lower levels and remain powerful and clear even at the highest levels. <music> Tracks that weren't as bass heavy benefited equally from a more apparent separation while enhancing the highs and mids and bolstering the lows that were present. There's just something satisfying and visceral about low frequency bass when it's done right by a speaker. And the Sonos sub gets it right, point blank period. For $700, Sonos has built the perfect companion for its speakers with the sub Gen 3. And they've done it wirelessly in an attractive form factor and with an ease of use that belies the complexity of its engineering. The sub adds a dimension to your existing Sonos speakers that you weren't sure you needed, but when you finally add it, you will not be able to go back to a time before you had it, if that makes any sense. The sub is a stylish testament to Sonos's oral engineering that comes with an equally hefty price tag. However, with the quality of bass reproduction and the overall sound improvement of whichever speakers you pair it with, somehow it justifies the cost. I'm not sure your significant other is gonna agree with that statement, but c'est la vie. When you buy the Sonos sub, you're signaling to the world that you're all in on the Sonos ecosystem. This product has no intention and no capability of being paired with anything other than a Sonos device. An ideal home theater setup with an ARC and the sub is expensive to be sure. But if you wanna invest in your home theater system and you're not willing to compromise valuable living space for prototypical audiophile AV componentry, or you're just not willing to go through the hassle of setting up a multi-component AV system, this is a premium option that will not disappoint. Bottom line, this joint slipped to base, big team. Check out this playlist for my other Sonos device reviews and make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content 
or leave me a comment below for any other questions you may have. Peace.